Something about film is different. It has a texture. From lens to camera, falling off around the edges of the film, to have the vignette, how it captures the light. Yes, you can get into the tools that we have to create that from digital capture, but it's not the same as capturing in film, especially 65, because the grain structure is different, the images look different, you know, it's something very unique. For Oppenheimer, the filmmakers used film as their tool of choice. My name is uh, Hoyte van Hoytema. I'm the cinematographer of uh, Oppenheimer. We've done four films together now, and um, every film brings a tremendous amount of challenges with it. Chris has had written into the script uh, the cues for black and white and color. He thought it was a good idea to use it sort of to distinguish two different storylines in it. It started with having to ask Kodak and seeing if they were able to, to manufacture it. Of course, uh, a very big ask from uh, Photocam. You, you'll find a lot of souls and a lot of spirits that are extremely willing to go the extra mile in order to do new things. We just keep progressively moving the format forward as the creatives demand. On Oppenheimer, what Nolan wanted to do with 65 millimeter and black and white hadn't ever really been done before. It was a long, uh, long process in a way, not as easy as we thought it would be, you know? The major new challenge was handling black and white in 65 millimeter format. Now, black and white in 65 millimeter hadn't been manufactured in decades. Kodak had to figure out how to make it. It involved working with our lab engineers on processing that product. The you know, introduction of the black and white photography, we all knew it was going to be a challenge and potentially gorgeous. And one of the things that we have is a laboratory, a film lab that we can develop and promote and, 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 and keep the ball rolling. We'd never processed 65 millimeter black and white before, and we had to figure out not only how to process it, but how to switch between black and white and color processing, which involved installing huge tanks in our lab where we could temporarily place all of the color chemistry while we were loading up our processing tanks with black and white chemistry, and vice versa. We had to learn during production. Like, we had to figure out how not to break the film while they were shooting this stuff. So in a way, you know, yes, it's innovation. And innovation starts, of course, with, a, with very vague ideas and then a lot of great minds that readjust and adapt and invent the technology around it to realize those ideas. Our guiding objective was to give people a chance to see the film without any sort of digital filter in place. During production, that meant printing everything they shot. After the edit, we have to cut each section and then glue it together. Final prints are made from the assembled sections. That's when Hoyta and Kristen, the lab color timer, work together to perfect the color of every shot. That's where we start every day for months. I mean, Nolan's films are always like epic, like everything, every part of the process always seems to be so epic. He's always wanting to try new things and push, push the lab into trying things when we say we can't do them. He says, sure you can, and he's always right. We needed to finish this film on film that required cutting the film together, where you actually have to frame accurately with a scissor, cut the film. There is literally a handful of people in the world who still cut negative. And one of them specializes in 65 millimeter. Her name is Simone Appleby. And we bring her over from Paris every time we're doing a 65 millimeter project. Basically, you take the negative and you cut it to the director's vision. And you do that by means of an EDL, which is a list that comes out of the Avid, which just gives you every single shot. 
and then you have a work print, which is the print version of this, and you roll the negative against the print, and your last visual reference is a quick time with the key numbers written on it as well. It's a three-hour movie, so there's a lot of shots. There's over 3,000 shots in there, so that obviously takes time because it means that there's some short takes and it's cut in dialogue, so that takes more time and you have to be very careful. I don't just do neg cutting, of course, but yes, it's fun to do a 65 mil neg cut, for sure. If you see Oppenheimer in IMAX 70 millimeter film, you're replicating the experience that Chris and Hoyta had when they first viewed and fell in love with the film. We believe that in the analog way and staying in the analog way, we maintain the highest you know, resolution possible. We want as many people to see this on film as possible. And then, of course, we want as many people to see it who can't see it on film, who don't have the access to a, a venue to see it on film, to be able to see the best possible representation of the movie in a digital environment. We were able to manipulate the images and make them to look exactly how Hoyta and Christopher intended for them to look on film. And the final tweaks, we had to split screen the image between a digital and a film in the screen and match the film identical throughout from real one all the way to the end. You keep the integrity of the film in both medias to look about the same. We probably spent about six months ahead to make sure all of the details were locked up in both the photochemical and the digital processes. All of the details were paid attention to. If anything was different, that we noted it ahead of time, and that we were able to simply have them sit down and agree that we had done the work ahead of time and that what was on the digital side was matching the film side. The dedication to film capture allow us to continue to provide these services on a scale that makes it possible for them to use it on feature films and television shows. It's fairly easy to shoot on film. I'd love people just to try it out. Film is extremely tolerant, very rewarding process. It is not at all as intimidating as a lot of people think. It's almost native to the format that, that it has this, this ability to, to, to pull a little bit respect out of the people that are surrounding the camera and rely on the film to sort of capture uh, not only what you, what you physically see, but also captures the energy that is put into it and the love that is put into it. It's a very, very special, very magical, but also a very concrete process that is very easy to sort of grasp. I would say do it, you know? Don't hesitate, just, just, just go for it. It's, it's a beautiful thing.